Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Abinar aka Traveling Cheese Days, your soon to be favourite travel vlogger, blogger, content creator. In this video, I'm going to be answering a lot of the questions that you guys have sent me because I want you to get to know me more. I just feel like when I started my YouTube channel, I never did a get to know me tag, an introduction video, I just went straight into travel. And so some of you guys may be watching me thinking, who's this mysterious girl traveling the world? What's her backstory? What's her agenda? And I wanted to kind of dis dispel all the myths by answering your questions today. I divided the questions that people sent me into categories. So I'm gonna go into questions about me, questions about travel, then questions about my life as a content creator, questions around my relationships, and then the future. What does the future hold for me in 2023? So let's get right into it. So the first question was, how old are you? I am 25 years young, okay? I was born in December 1997. You can just calculate from there. And I am definitely Gen Z. A lot of people are like, oh, you're millennial, no. Millennials ended in like 1995, 1996. So from 1997, we are the first Gen Z people. We are literally the people leading a race, okay? How did things get started? What inspired you to start traveling? At what age did you take your first solo trip? I studied abroad when I was in university in 2017, 2018. And I studied abroad in France. Like I wasn't gonna, I wasn't trying to go anywhere far. I wasn't trying to do anything big. Um, I live in London, so it's just like, you know, across <laughs> the border to France. But in my school in France, I met a ton of international students from Canada and America. And they were like, had this dream about Europe, about traveling around Europe. And I was like, why is it so hype? And they were like, it's so accessible, so cheap to travel around Europe. Like they can never imagine getting 20 pound, 30 euro flights, you know, back at home, but you can get that in Europe. And I was like, really? And like, they really opened my eyes to how accessible travel can be. And like, we used to travel like every other weekend. Like, we had classes, we had work, we had presentations, but somehow we found time to travel and we were doing it on a super dirt cheap budget. Like we would split Airbnbs, we would stay in hostels, we would like cook our own breakfasts, but like, we still like had such a good time. Also like the EU, especially, if you're 18 to 25 years old, there's a lot of discounts you can kind of get. So a lot of places like museums or tourist attraction attractions where we could just get in for free so we were really traveling and that's where i found my love for travel so i actually took my first solo trip in 2017 whilst on my year i was on my year abroad and i didn't really go anywhere far i just went to another city in france i went to lille um i went to go see their christmas markets i went for like a night came back the next day but like that's how i started and then it just grew from there i have to say though when I was young, my parents sent me to boarding school in Ghana. I'm currently filming this in my parents' house in Ghana, but I usually live in London. And so from the age of 11, I was flying solo between boarding school in Ghana and home in England. And I think because of that, from a very young age, I kind of had to be independent. What is your job? How do you finance your travels? I had a lot of people asking me, like, how do I pay for my travels? Like, what do I do? I kind of want to say that, like, on social media, all you see is travel. Like, that's all you see in my life. But, like, travel is basically only 20% of my life. 80% of the time, I'm in London in an office working a 9 to 5. So, I currently work as a project manager for a public sector organization. I don't want to say more than that because I've seen people on TikTok talk about their jobs and then get sacked and fired. So I don't really want to, like, breach any contract actual in obligations about what I can say about my job um, so I'll just leave it there but I'm a project manager in the UK the average salary is about 30 something thousand and I earn just above the average salary so I'm not rich in fact in like American or Canadian terms like in the UK we earn not a lot of money at all so I'm not boiling anything like that I also work as a travel content creator so creating travel content is also my job it's like it's not a side hustle right now it sometimes feels like a full-time job and I struggle to balance my nine to five and creating travel content I get invited on press trips, so people pay me to go on trips and to cover destination. I do collabs where I promote products and services on my social media pages. I also um, sometimes do freelance videography and photography work for brands. I have my own solo travel ebook that you should buy. Even just by posting content on YouTube and TikTok, I get money because of monetization. And that's how I finance my travels. I try and save between 25% to 30% of my income into a travel savings fund every single month, like discipline. Like anytime I get any income, I'm saving some of that towards travel. And that's how I kind of build up a fund to be able to travel. 
Okay, the last question about me was what are my favorite TV shows and what's my favorite book? Okay, so I love K-dramas. I don't have a favorite TV show itself. I love South Korean TV shows. I watch it with subtitles because I don't know Korean. If you want to get into like South Korean TV shows, I would say the starter pack is Boys Over Flowers. That was the first Korean drama I ever watched and I fell in love with Lee Min Ho. He's my favorite actor. Crash Landing on You and The Sense of the Sun. Those are three K-dramas are get into it. My favorite book, The Children of Blood and Bone, it's a book that is toted to be the black Harry Potter. And I just love like African literature of any kind. All right, let's get into the questions about travel. So I got so many questions about this, but I'm gonna try and like keep it short. How far in advance do you plan your trips? It really depends on the trip. I would say on average, it takes me about two to three months to plan a trip. But if I'm going on a trip where I know I'm gonna spend a lot of money, I try and plan a trip like a good eight months to a year before the trip. I know it sounds crazy, but if I plan a trip early, it means I can pay into that trip every month. And a trip that's like, three grand might seem quite expensive to me right now but if i had like 10 months to pay for that trip that's like 300 pounds each month that's like a lot more like doable and then if i do like a quick weekend trip i can probably book that like two to three weeks before but i'll say on average it's like two to three months how do you find your trips and how do you choose your destinations how do you find good value flights or holidays? So I tend to choose my destinations based on the time I have. The biggest constraint I have in my life right now is time. Because I do work a nine to five and I only have a couple of weeks a year that I can actually use to travel. If I don't have a lot of time and only have a weekend or three days to travel with at a certain period, then I know that the destination I'm gonna choose is going to be a destination within Europe, like or in, even within, within England, so I don't have to kind of travel too far, spend too much time traveling, I don't have a lot of time. If I have more than four days to travel with, then I'm gonna leave Europe. And I definitely, I always have a list of destinations, just destinations I see on social media, destinations I'm like, I really wanna go to, bucket list places outside of Europe that I want to go to. So anytime I have, you know, more time to travel, I'm like, okay, let's go here, let's go there. I find my flights and my hotel deals through two main sites. So I use Skyscanner to find flight deals and I use Booking.com to find hotel deals. I actually made a video a few years ago about how to find really good deals and how to travel on a budget. So I definitely recommend checking out that video. I'll link it up here. How do you budget while abroad? Like I'm a strong believer in prevention is better than cure. So sometimes what I do is like, I will shadow book a trip. What I mean is I will find a flight deal, I will find a company accommodation, I'll be like, okay, if I was to do this trip, what activities would I use? What transport would I book? And I kind of plan the trip without actually putting any money down or booking anything. And I look at all everything together, I'm like, how much does this cost? And then that helps me see if it's like pretty high or pretty low for me. I, as I mentioned, I'm always saving towards travel. So any point in time, I'm constrained by my whatever money is in my travel savings account. So once I've shadow booked a holiday, I'm like, okay, this is how much this is gonna cost. I look at my travel savings account, I'm like, okay, this is too expensive for me, or actually this is within what I can afford. And two of the biggest costs for any holiday is gonna be your flights and your hotels. And those are things you buy before you even go on holiday. So once I'm like, okay, the cost for those two things are in my budget, then I know I'm pretty okay. And then when I'm on my holiday itself, um, again, I'll take money from my travel savings account and I use, I'll use i use that. Sometimes I do go over my budget, but that's why it's always important to have like emergency savings or emergency fund. One thing about me is like, when I'm on the trip itself, I don't really like denying myself. I think to myself like, when am I ever gonna come back to this place? It's a once in a life opportunity. If I have the opportunity to do something that's unique to this place, I'm gonna do it even if it means maybe blow my budget. But because I, as I mentioned, pre-plan my trip, pre-anticipate the budget, it means that like, even though I do go up above budget a little bit, it's still kind of controlled. How do you feel when traveling? Do you ever get homesick? If yes, how do you handle it? I will admit, I do not feel homesick when I'm traveling most of the time. I think it's because, as I mentioned before, I went to boarding school and also my family were kind of split in different places. Like my parents were in Ghana, my sister was living in Spain, I was living in England. We were never really in one place at any point in time. So it's really hard to kind of feel like one place is home. Like Ghana could be home. Also I live in London, that's home too, you know what I mean? I also lived in France for a year when I was studying abroad. That, that, that was home for a while. But one thing I do say, sometimes I miss routine and rest. Like when I'm traveling, I'm always like, go, go, go. And then at some point I get really exhausted and that really affects my mental health and I sometimes get really emotional. And I used to struggle at the start 
with giving myself rest days. Like, what do you mean you're planning an itinerary and putting a day to just sit on the beach or putting a day to just like sleep? Like, you spent so much money to go to that place or to go to that destination, you're gonna go and sleep and rest. But now to grow old, I'm like, for me to handle my emotions better, I actually do need to book in rest when I'm on holiday. And I had to train myself to think, like, this is a waste of time. I'm actually gonna enjoy myself so much more if I give myself rest and time to just rest. And if you do get homesick, I recommend, like, give yourself time to connect back to friends and family. Like, journal what you're going through, record your memories. Out of all the places you visited, which has been your favorite place to go? I hate asking this question. Anyone who's met me knows how annoying I am yeah, and what anyone asks me this question because I can never answer it. I do not have a favorite place. I would say there are places that have really amazed me. But I wouldn't say there's any place that's like super favorite. Jordan stands out to me as a really amazing place. If anyone was like to me, Abna, I want a destination that's very well rounded to travel to, a place where there's adventure, there's really good hotels, I can have access to water, to the beach, I can have access to religious sites, I can have history, I can have art culture, good food, Jordan has everything. So I guess I'll say that's my favorite place, but no, there's so many other places too, so it's really hard to decide. Okay, so I'm switching to my phone for a little bit just because my camera is overheating. Um, another question I got was, as a black traveler, do you research about racism before you travel to a new country? Yes and no. So I like to do research and find out the experiences of other black travelers in that destination. I do like to get perspectives from like a wide range of people who have been to that destination. As long as I don't feel like I'm gonna be physically in danger, I will kind of go. I personally feel like racism is everywhere. So if I was not to travel to a country because they're racist, then I, would, I wouldn't even be able to live anywhere in the world. Like it is everywhere. And the final question on travel was, do you ever get lonely on solo trips? Do you make friendships when you're on holiday? Yes, I feel like I've gotten to a point where like I do not struggle to make friends when I'm traveling by myself. I just feel like if you're very open to people when you're traveling, obviously be smart, be safe. There are so many apps you can use now to meet people, like people use dating apps like Tinder, even like Bumble friendships to make friends. If you stay in a hostel or if you do like group activities, so instead of you booking like a private tour, book a group tour and meet other people. Um, that's how, how I do it. And I, I always tell people like, so travel is usually not very lonely at all because usually it's, you're, you're pretty much open to meeting a lot of people when you're traveling by yourself. All right, the next content creator question is around my life as a content creator. How did you start travel content creation and how did you grow your IG following? Um, was it structured or was it organic? One thing I've learned about social media growth is that you will not grow unless you are intentional. Like any time I've not cared about growing my social media, I did not grow. Every time I did care about my social media, um, following and I wanted to grow, I grew. And the reason I started creating content around my travels was because when I did my study year abroad and I caught a drama bug, I came back to England and all my friends in England were not interested in traveling. They were just like, we just wanna graduate, pass exams, and then start our careers. Obviously, like we were all broke. Like no student is like rich unless you come from a rich family. So I kind of got and I didn't really want to pressure anyone into traveling with me, which is why I travel solo a lot. But I still craved a travel community. I still wanted to connect with other travelers. I still wanted to connect with people who had the same passion as me. I also just didn't want to bombard my friends on my personal Instagram account for my travels. So that's why I created a separate page. I was like, I'm gonna put my travel stuff there, and whoever wants to connect with me can just come and connect with me and I and then I can also connect with other travel bloggers and other other people in the travel community so that's where I started from so I, I caught a travel bug in 2017 but I only started creating content in 2019 and I remember my goal was to reach a thousand followers because I really wanted to like make friends with other travel bloggers and other travel enthusiasts but I thought people wouldn't take me seriously if I DM'd them or reach out to them with like only a couple hundred followers so I was like if I reach a thousand then that's me certified, I'm a travel lover. And when I was really intentional about growing to a thousand followers, I grew, like I got to a thousand followers within before a year of starting travel content creation. And then I stopped caring. I was like, I reached a thousand, whatever. I just wanna travel and have fun. And when I stopped caring, I stopped growing. And then I jumped on TikTok and I was like, wait, everyone was like, you can grow really quick on, quickly on TikTok. There's so many opportunities on TikTok, blah, blah, blah. And I remember on TikTok, when I first joined TikTok in 2020, 
there weren't a lot of people using it to create travel content. At that time, people still thought it was a dancing app. I was like, if I want to create a travel community here, I have to do the legwork. I have to actually create a lot of content because there's not a lot of travel community on TikToks. I had to build one for myself. So I was really intentional about my TikTok and I started cutting brand deals. I was like, no way. And I realized a lot of brands were finding me on TikTok but then they wanted to work with me on Instagram. But because I didn't really care about how big my audience was on Instagram and my numbers weren't that high, I felt like my earning potential on Instagram was limiting the opportunities of getting through TikTok. So then last year, I was like, I want to reach 100K. And I spent two months where I posted literally every single day on Reels and I kind of researched kind of what works, what's trending, what's working. And I reached 100k. So I would say like, if you're intentional and you give yourself a goal and you work towards it, you will grow a social media following. Do you still think it's possible to create a travel Instagram? Yes, yes, yes. I have I know people who started at travel pages like a year, two years ago, and have blown up so fast. Especially in this age of reels and short form content, you can easily go viral, you can easily get eyes on your content without having to do too much work. I think if you have general passion for travel and you know your niche, you know what you bring to the table, you know what's unique about you and you can really sell that point, then you're good to go. What is your process when producing Instagram content? What is your creative flow? The thing about travel content is like, you can't go home and say, oh, I don't really like this picture, let me go shoot it again. Because I'm not traveling another 10 hours on a plane to go and shoot that content. Like, it's once and done. So for me as a travel blogger, when I'm, whenever I travel, that is my opportunity to create content. So I literally like spend a lot of my time traveling just creating content. But I can definitely do a full video on this topic because there's a whole creative flow that I have. And yeah, let me know if you want a video on my creative flow. How is it for you as a black woman in the travel content creator space? This is, this is the whole topic, this is the whole video. Like being a black woman in as and being a content creator in itself is like one thing. Being a black woman, being a travel content creator is like another thing as well. I just know that my content won't go as far as a lot of other people's content. The norm is white travel bloggers. And that is the truth. Like if you search travel content on YouTube or Instagram, like the top searches are gonna be the bog standard white woman, maybe in a flowy dress, maybe living van life. Like that's what's trending, but it's also a unique thing to be a black woman traveler because there's not a lot of black women creating travel content. So when I'm working with brands, they often reach out to me because I'm one of the few people they can reach out to if they want their campaign to be diverse. And so actually it's giving me a lot of opportunities that other people won't get because I represent a demographic that is really, really small. It's been great when it comes to working with brands because I can just market the fact that I am unique. But I think when it comes to like my organic content, it kind of sucks. Finally, I would say when it comes to press trips, being a black travel content creator, you can often feel like the token. And you can often feel like there's only one space. Like sometimes I will go on a press trip and there's only one black travel content creator. Oh, there's only one minority content creator and it's like they can't have too many of us on the same trip and it's not, it just doesn't make sense to me uh what filters do you use i use my own presets presets are like filters that you can create on adobe lightroom and i was selling the presets i will probably resell the presets at some point um but that's what i use someone also asked me for their camera settings I currently use the Sony CV1 to vlog. I use the GoPro to vlog. I also use my phone to shoot videos for Reels and TikTok. And I use the Fujifilm X-T30 to shoot photography. I have four different devices in my camera bag and each of them require different settings. But like there's no camera in the world where you cannot find a YouTube video that will tell you the right settings. So I definitely recommend just like Googling the camera you have plus settings and you will definitely find YouTube videos that kind of show you the right settings for your camera. Okay, I'm back on the camera. Hopefully it doesn't overheat before I finish the video. The next category was a question on my relationship. Someone asked me if any of my recent trips have secretly been vacations. Guys, if I was in a relationship, I would have at least soft launched by now. I would have shown you an elbow, a hand, a wristwatch. I would have dropped some hints. <laughs> but 
I am single, so no, I'm not doing any vacations. And like low key too, I pride myself on being a creator who is open, transparent, very kind of honest. So, you know, I wouldn't lie to you guys or try and hide something like that from you guys. My love life is very non-existent. I, uh, I have actually never been in a relationship in my life. I've always been single and it is an insecurity for me. Um, pray for me. <laughs> I'm out on the streets. Uh, I really do hope I meet a guy who loves traveling, who loves God, who's tall, who's handsome, who's witty and funny and beautiful that I can just live life with. And when that does happen, then, you know, I would definitely bring you guys along and do vacation vlogs. But hey, whilst I'm still single, at least I can still create really cool solo travel content for you guys. I know you guys enjoy that, so that's cool. The future. So, what countries am I aiming to visit this year? What destinations do I have in mind for 2023? So, I'm hoping to really go out of my depth when it comes to solo travel. I've solo traveled so long now that there are places that at first I would have been really scared to solo travel to. That I'm like, now, no, I don't know, like, go for it. Um, I want to inspire you guys so much more when it comes to solo travel. So, I'm really hoping to take trips to places that people wouldn't typically solo travel to places like morocco places like the Maldives, where people are like oh you have to go as a couple maybe you can go solo too let's see how that's like you know what i mean i really want to push the boundaries of solo travel and where you can solo travel to what you can do like for me solo travel is about independence about freedom and so the idea of like not being able to solo travel to a certain place mm, i don't really agree with it so let's see how that goes do i have any visions for my brand for my channel so i recently got monetized on youtube i want to say thank you guys so much for supporting me on this journey and i really want youtube to come like another source of income for me and a place where i really just sit and like make friends with you guys so because of that one of my girls this year is to post every single week on youtube and just get to know you guys more will you host another trip so in 2022 i hosted two group, group trips to bali and to turkey i have to say i love these group trips they were so amazing but when i came off these group trips i got a promotion at work and i can't host group trips whilst doing my current job my future ambition is to kind of quit my nine to five and focus on traveling tuesdays full time at some point in the new future so i do anticipate doing group trips maybe not this year but like next year or so i had a really good time on my group trip but i just don't think i'm gonna do my group trips to trip trip again i had some grievances i had for me like if you come on a trip with me i want you to enjoy i've really experienced some amazing travels and it's you're traveling with me i want you to experience the same thing so a trip that's like 70 percent great 80 percent great does not cut it for me it has been 1995 and so because of that i don't really feel comfortable doing group trips like any more of trevor trip so in the future i will try and find like better partners to partner with to make sure you guys get the best out of the trip but that's not going to be in 2023 unfortunately will you be arranging meetups do you need travel bodies i do love meeting you guys and i always tell people if you are in london come and say hi there's so many people that were passing by London or live in London and they were like, Abna, I'm in town, you wanna meet up? And they just follow me, they don't know me, I don't know them, but I meet up with them. So if you're in London, I would love to meet up with you. If there are a lot of demand, I might arrange a meetup in London or New York or any kind of big major hub. But yeah, that was all the questions you guys asked. Actually, I'm lying. That was the most frequently asked questions. I had so many questions from you guys. So I wanna say thank you so much for sending them through. And obviously, if you wanna learn, know more about me and just kind of follow along, please subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be showing up on here a lot more 2023 and i'm excited for the adventures we're going to be doing together bye Mwah.